We put Juliet in the spotlight for a while as she scouts the upcoming meet location, even going so far as to terrify the rest of the team by actually talking to people with, with words, not bullets. It's time to begin episode 41, maybe with a truck full of guns. All right, so you guys want to fast forward and get a runner bar 23? Did we uh, want to stash anything, uh, like go there a day in advance, maybe Juliet do some sneaky sneak and like hide a, yes. a gun in the bathroom? Because like I said, I'm I'm built around unarmed. I am perfectly fine doing this as just fisticuffs. But if it comes time for, you know, for improv to throw a punch, I don't want her to die in one shot, you know? Yeah. Uh, the way I imagine this is the improv and Juliet, maybe the cavalry, and I'm counting on you to hit somebody with a gun that I can take. Sounds good. Uh, what kind of guns? How many? Horatio, you want uh, machine pistols? Yes? Well, I mean, I have guns. I'll give you mine to hold on to. And when you guys burst in, I'll, I'll, I'll take them. Oh, oh, oh so we're just... Uh, when we burst in... I, mm. Okay, so right, we, the way we're going to work up. is we're basically going to take their guns away from them. Right. I was thinking about... Guys. So the current plan is to have just Horatio walk in and then we burst in after if need be. All right. You know, and, and if, all th if things go well, Kennel's going to be able to talk them down. If we things hope. don't go well, having you guys armed to the gills, armored up, maybe with a truck full of guns and or explosives, is going to be a big deal. Sounds about right to me. So you guys aren't going to stash a weapon or anything? I don't think so, because Juliet's going to be outside and armed to the teeth to begin with. Okay. One thing that she would want to get beforehand. We're also going to scout this place out first. Yeah, that too. Okay. She wants an as technology strike. So that's 10F. And just as a sanity check, everybody has an antidote patch, correct? Oh, yeah. I believe so. Let me check. Oh, there's a sale right now. It's stuff for Shaq. And that's a no, Julia. Oof. Oh, well. Okay. So if we're scouting things out, I'm going to need some rolls. Alrighty. Let's do bit of stealth. Okay, scouting it out in a one mile radius is going to be very, very time consuming, Julia. <laughs> yeah, she's paranoid. If she has the full day, at least, I assume that she's just going to be at this all day because she does not want this to mess. All right. Yeah, if you're going to be at it the full 24 hours, you're going to have to be popping a long haul in order not to be dealing with sleep deprivation. How much time do we have? Or is it just not scheduled? It's that. I said I said thirty six from when you and uh, from where Horatio called you guys together. Okay, make it a couple blocks, I guess, and then a little bit longer at escape routes, just to make sure she's aware of them. One mile okay. is a bit ambitious. Just a bit. Yeah, we'll say up to six blocks away. Yeah, I mean she's got a flashback system, more than so enough. perfect memory. It's not too hard. She just has to glance down the way once, and then she's. Or it's touristville, any... so all of the cameras have been busted by mm -hmm. baseball bats or something of that sort. You do notice every time that you pass the runner bar, there's a orc standing outside with a like an obviously armored jacket. It, it looks like he has like a cyber skull or something on, holding a very uh, large shotgun. Most people tend to skirt it, but if you go by at nighttime during their peak hours, you you'll see some shady looking people walking in again in the long trench coats, like the black leather trench coat, black leather pants, the large dark mirror shades where you just can't see them. There aren't very many cameras that are usable or even out there, but this is handily in Brain Eater turf. So you do see um, see their tag, which for whatever reason, I can't think of it right. You do see tags fairly frequently. Okay. How many within the area? The couple blocks? Uh, you're looking at probably a dozen within the six okay. block radius. It's still a pretty big area. Yeah, it is. It gives her an idea of head count, response time. But that's just it. tags. That's not necessarily people. That's um, true. Gives her a start, though. And then the place itself, is it just one story? How many exits? Uh, the place itself is two story. And you see uh, two entrances and exits and one emergency exit. Okay. As well as a um, half of a fire escape from the second floor. It looks like 
it's either decayed over time and just kind of fallen down or been cut off or something of that sort. Hmm. So I guess one more emergency exit. This is all getting reported back, of course. At some point, she would have to trot inside, I guess, just scope out what the staff look like or just the typical people inside. I'm guessing that would be an etiquette check. And she's going to be uh, swapping well, around you her look. She's going what to be swapping wearing? around her look to look to be basically, I'm forgetting the term, a if biker. If you have guys, you may want to use that. Yeah, she's got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no question. That's, I was going to say, she's got a different look completely. So aside from Dwarf, hopefully she's not going to be recognized at all. And you've seen a large mixture of people, of meta types going in here the time, the bit that you've stayed outside. You that is all but, all but trolls. We're going to say that she's going for biker grunge sort of stick. She will be using, of course, the synth skin mask, the different hair, swap over to some random vassal gang colors from across the freeway, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What is she dressed in? Like, literally, like, what is she wearing? It's a wannabe runner bar. So uh, let's go for overly uh, over the top sort of biker type. I don't even know how to describe it. Lots of lots of steel and studs. Neon hair, buffed leather, or synth leather. Okay. Anyway. Lots of black. You come walking up. Do you have the uh, assault rifle over your shoulder? Of course. It's part of the look. Yeah, the orc with the shotgun. He steps in front of you. And Would you mind making me a perception check? Sure thing. Now, has Juliet seen somebody with a cyber skull before? Probably a junkyard job, but a cyber skull, I doubt. Okay. When you look underneath, like you can, see, you can actually see like the bottom bit of his jaw moving when he talks to you, when, when he steps in front of you, like and he looks down. He's like, um, "Hey there, Chummer. Uh, sorry, you, you can't be. Uh, you can't carry the the cannon in here." Oh, but it's just a fine. G- give it to me, and just just give it to me. She shucks the magazine and hands it over. Puts the magazine in the pocket. Yeah, he looks surprised that, that you actually took the magazine away and it actually appears to be loaded. He just kind of gives you like a, like a second look, like you see his head pull back. And he turns around and a okay, side door slides open. It looks almost like a, a quick drop off for like mail. He like slides it in there and it slides down. You hear, hear it hit in the back. He goes, I'll give it to you whenever you uh, come out. Um, Thank you. Yeah, just go ahead and head on in. Does Julia have a sin? Yes, she does. She has a fake sin. Okay, there's a sin scanner underneath the door. It does like it, it just blinks as you go underneath. You walk in, and this entire place is it's mostly chrome and matte black. The, the tables the tables are matte black. The chairs are chrome. I'll fit right in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Walking in like dressed how you are, it's like oh, I don't look out of place at all here. <laughs> Every, uh, everybody looks to be overly paranoid. They're all they all have their backs up against the wall, despite it being incredibly dark here. Their sunglasses are down low. They're speaking in very hushed tones while they're strumming music. It's just enough to like if somebody was trying to listen in, it's hard for the, like it'd be hard for anybody to actually hear what's being said. There's a handful of waitresses who are uh, in uh, leather jackets that stop like halfway down like their rib cage stops roughly there. Um, leather bust. Yeah. I was trying to think of how to say that. Actually? Uh, being crass, but I couldn't think bust. of how to do it. That's the word for it. Yeah. It comes it comes down to there. They're wearing um, either like leather hot pants or a mini skirt with fishnets. Yeah, it looks like it, it, it would almost look like a stripper bar. Or a topless bar if, you know, you didn't have creepos or you didn't have these weirdos around here. Just looking like posers. <laughs> and Juliet would have done this as soon as she walked in. Not a single person in here is even halfway dangerous. Like, despite them carrying heavy pistols, you see a couple of, like, super war hawks that are dangling off the hip in a way that anybody who's ever actually used it wouldn't carry it that way. Like, it, the barrel's pointed up towards them versus... <laughs> Like as they're sitting down versus like the handle being in an easy, easy way to grab of it. Uh, OK, so first of all, I'm guessing that that means that she wouldn't have had her um, taser taken away yet, too. No, just 
just the big obvious gun. Okay. And same thing for her pistol then? I forgot to ask, but she did, She was usually having... The only thing that was taken away would be her assault rifle. Okay, so she's still got her Ares Predator, Nox, Taser, just in case. Second of all, besides the actual guests, staff are the waitresses, and do any look like actual muscle on the inside? <laughs> well, there's a very large, expensive-looking drone. It's taller and larger than a troll. What? Yeah. It's a bipedal drone. It, its feet are th- like a three-pronged, almost like bird-like foot. It has like an SMG on one arm, a uh, a katana attached to the to the other, and it's just kind of like standing there, hovering over the crowd, very motionless. It's hard to tell if it's even on or not. Oh, improv. Oh uh, yeah. Do you see what I'm seeing? Um yeah, is it online? Let me see. Juliet, of no, course. It, it, a... it is not online. Right. Okay. Juliet is going to make a beeline for it and then just sort of circle it, staring up at it with sort of, you know, childlike glee. Is anyone good with a bow? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Never Bob, mind. Look over my shoulder, focus. Do you see any plugs? Uh, yes, there are multiple plugs into this place. Like each no. little booth and I think, Juliet, about, like... I think Juliet means does the robot have a USB port? Oh, no, no, not at okay. all. Aww. If you actually peer behind it, none of the like actual parts that you would see in a drone, like the, the fuel plug, the like where the actual like interface is, all that sort of stuff, none of that is actually there. Oh, okay. oh it's just a shell. Fine. Is there any meat muscle in the, gr- in the joint? No. The closest person that you would see that might be there would be a bartender who is a somewhat muscular human. He's all tattooed up. He's wearing the uh, skin tight black muscle shirt, black leather pants, a studded belt. And uh, he has a intentionally obvious, it might be a pistol. It has like a grip of, of something sticking out like the front of his pants. All right. She's going to look around again, see if she can spot any kind of those hairline cracks you see where something indicates a basically a trapdoor or crevice. She's looking for hidden turrets. No, you do not see any of those. OK, she's well and truly puzzled right now because what are they going to do? Just bring in the bouncer from the front. <sighs> she's going to buzz the group as a whole, start a group and I. Everyone, explain this to me. What do they do when there's a fight? There's no yo, one. Yo, yo, Corp- Jules, Jules, you, you're in Touristville. That's where Corp kids go. They gotta expect some kind of gangers come here sometime or another, right? I of- mean, someone's gonna make trouble. Even these wet behind the ears kids. I mean, their guns are loaded. What do they do if they take a shot at each other? Yeah, but is this the kind of place you'd hang out? You think a real operator gonna go there? I mean, no, but they gotta have something. What am I missing? What? Oh, oh, roto drones. You think they got roto drones that just like pop in the door or something? Yeah, they got them upstairs. Is the stairway up to the second floor labeled staff only, or do guests go up there at some point? There's actually a full on, like, reinforced steel door, sim- similar to the one that you bought a couple of weeks ago. It's completely locked. It actually appears to have a keypad, that, like an old school, like, metal keypad that you actually have to put something in. Nice! But she's going to appreciate that. Except it's all chrome. Everything is chrome. <laughs> Old school metal keypad. Give me one moment. Oh, hey, a lockpick set. No, I forget. Does she actually have? Because we just got to do this, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Locksmith. Improv. Watch my back. Yeah. Pen. And she pins a mini cam on her shoulder. Yeah. Just yell at me if someone comes up behind me, okay? Um, okay. <laughs> Improv, would you mind making me an E-War or a perception check? She's getting a lot of like sideways looks right now. <laughs> um, people, people are looking at you. You might want to be careful. What? They're all babies. She's still just sort of staring up and all at the scrap heap and then looking around every once in a while. Yeah, if you want to try to pick the lot, make me a roll, please. She's debating. It, obviously, she's not going to do this in plain sight. Mr. GM, with Kennel's been watching a whole lot of uh, late night tridio since he's you know, always on Nova Coke and Cram. Was there a recent movie or perhaps like a big, like a TV series involving like, you know, futuristic runners where somebody had to pick a lock? 
No, because who uses these? Well, that's why I said fantasy or sci-fi. I was trying. Sorry, there goes that <laughs> idea. Well, like even like most people nowadays don't even want to use these because they they were clunky and didn't usually work. You tend to get the numbers that you actually push that, like they they get worn while the rest of them don't. <laughs> <laughs> the password definitely does not have two three four in it. Hmm. That what I was thinking is if there if there had been like a recent show, then uh, maybe Juliet could do something social and be like, oh, this is just like Night of the Chrome Hawk where he had to pick a lock on a door. I bet I could do that faster than you. But if there's no recent episodes that I've seen like that, then there's no way to do that. So. Hey guys, um, do you think I should try to talk to people? I mean, like the staff, because this is really weird. I mean, they gotta have some kind of defenses, and we gotta be ready for them. And I don't know, maybe I'd be useful to see what's upstairs. At this point, a tall, leggy elven woman comes skating up to you. Hey, Ome, how can I help you? Hi. Hmm. One nice long look up and down. Um, what kind of drone is this? Points up at Juggernaut. That would be a neonet Juggernaut. And well, like it's obvious that like her, her face even glazes over as she starts talking about it, like it, it's something that she's been forced to memorize, and she gives you like gives you like the full specs of what this thing can do. Oh, and Juliet's just drinking in every word, big smile of delight. Thank you. Now, if you're looking to get upstairs, that has to be approved by your fixer, and she gives you a wink. And these these are for members only. Her head flops to one side. Members, right. How much? That has to be set up uh, beforehand, but that'd be 250 new yen. She's kind of in shock right now. Why do I want to get up there? Oh, these are our, our private rooms. Uh, they are fully soundproof, fully Faraday caged, hermetically sealed, all of that. Prove it. She was, oh, Julia's yeah, practically bouncing. Uh, uh, of course. Before. Um, she pulls out a uh, data chip uh, from like a pocket that's hid underneath her jacket and hands it to you. She goes, this is a brochure that you can look at. All of our locations boast amenities such as this. Mm, you're not going to actually test? Fine. Snatches data chip, slots it in, browses. What trek is this? This is what we offer. You can take it or you can leave it. Fine, oh, I'll test it myself. Here. And she says, oh, man, and like rolls her eyes. And she's waving a cred stick up at the window. <sighs> Fine. She she takes it, slots it into a uh, comm link that's in her wrist, taps in a, a code, opens the door. Alrighty. And that's on the sheet now. And Julia would hop up, toss one of her spare burner comm links in one of the rooms, whichever one she got access to, and say, Oh, improv! Close the door. Would you see if you can find this uh, icon for me? And she rattles off the comm link code. Sure. Let's, uh, let's uh, take a look, see what we got. Yeah, improv, you don't find anything. Strolls in the room, retrieves comm link. Well, after you close the door, like you can't get the door back open. <laughs> oh. The okay. door won't budge. Okay. It literally will not move. Am I, even still in, still, am I even still in contact with them? Or did they mysteriously drop off the matrix? You can talk to Juliet. Okay. But the comic like, that she threw in is gone. <laughs> so uh, that's right. she didn't Juliet didn't get a key? No. Is there any kind of lock on the door? Not that's visible. So it's a mag lock. Uh-huh. Okay, and there's no kind of keypad, biometric reader, nothing. Not from the outside, no. Cue the mental face palm and turning around and finding a certain leggy elven. Excuse me. Um See her hold back a huff. Yes, how can I help you? The, the forced smile, like, oh my god, I thought I got, I thought I got rid of you. <laughs> uh, I did not realize that there would be... Mm, mm. Is it 250 fee for a certain amount of time, or is it per door globe and club? Per room, per hour. Okay. So, how do I open the door again after it's closed from the outside? We have to do that in case of an emergency. There is there's an emergency switch that we pull that opens up all of the all of the doors. Ooh, now, okay. If you are inside, all you, all you have to do is push the button and the door itself opens. That's nice. I left the comic inside. You're gonna need to use the emergency one. <sighs> I'm sorry, but the runner bar is not responsible for any or all lost or stolen property here on the premises. Mm-hmm. 
And if I told you my friend was unconscious inside? She just smiles at you. Well, then he would be retrieved in an hour. Blinks. Wyatt? Oh. Oh. Cute. Seriously, you have an emergency lever? At this point, she goes, if there's nothing else I can help you with, I have other customers I need to attend to. She wanders off. Well, fellas, I'm coming up dry here, unless we want to fig- try to figure out where that emergency outlock is. That would be very interesting, I think. Was there a public host, or was there a public matrix address uh, controlling the runner bar? There would be a franchise host. When you actually go into the host, it advertises that none of the facilities are controlled via matrix or host. It has to be uh, done on site and by shadow trained personnel. <laughs> yeah. Despite that being an oxymoron. Uh, we're, so for the upstairs, the did the rooms or the hallway, you know, when you come up the stairs, there's always a hallway. Was there a window anywhere close to that? Like, was there, was there any in view? Either in no, the. No, uh, but the there room? was that emergency exit that went to, like, the partial collapsed the, yeah. fire exit. Well, hey, we bought we bought all them ropes. What if we like tie a rope onto the emergency exit and we use that to like get away? Like we we kick open that emergency door and then we just like grab the rope and we just start swinging off of there, like that uh, Tarkan guy or Zartan. What, what was his name? I have no idea what you're talking about. It works though. It, yeah. it was Kirk. Kirk. Dwarf jungle warrior. That's what it was. I was thinking about that weird Humi reboot they did. I mean, everybody knows that the real warriors are orcs. Come on. Or trolls. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's why Night Errant tries so hard to keep us down. Yeah, they're afraid huh? we're going to swing out of a tree branch and, and jump on... I don't know if that's the reason. Whatever. Yo, yo, Jules. If they, gave us, if they gave us rights, we would be ruling the UCAS. Oh, yeah, 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 we would. Because we're big and we're strong and stuff. Uh, so And hey, smart. And, and strong, yeah. Yo, yo, Jules, you got be real careful though, yo. I mean, if you peeking around too much in there, then you show up tomorrow. You know, when we all roll up, I, I just I worry it might not end out too good for us. Eh, it's okay. Juliet's gonna pop back upstairs, or at least she's gonna review her memories. Would does the door look like it actually did seal off air? Yes, very much so. Okay. Uh, there was even the telltale hiss of it sealing. All right, we can work around this. So let me get this straight, guys. We're all going to go up to one of the private rooms. I'm assuming the brain leaders aren't going to do business with all these wannabes downstairs. And then we're going to be locked in a room with them. No one else can officially get in. But I mean, if if it's Horatio, who's going in again first? Horatio, right? I thought I, thought I was going to pretend I was Horatio. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can wipe the floor with anybody who comes in with you. Hey, yo, I've been, I've been practicing. Right. I'm going to be the king of the barons. Look what I did to my shotgun. And he actually painted the barrels both gold with spray paint. I got a solid gold AK shoddy right here. All right. Oh, it's, it's a work. Oh, man, I, I knew I was messing something up. Dang. Come to think of it. Yeah, perfect memory. Uh, Juliet's going to replay what the woman said to her earlier. Did she... When she mentioned an emergency means of opening all the doors, did she say that it was a physical lever, or what was her exact wording? She said it was an AR switch. Okay. Improv. Mm-hmm. AR switches. Can they be hacked? Things don't have to be online to project, like, a local AR thing, right? Or do they? No. Yeah, so it seems like they understand that because we're working with a lot of runners, uh, they want things to not be uh, hackable. Seems to be the order of the day here. So how does it work then? So if it's AR, though, it's still in the Matrix. So what, they use their comm link? Um, no, they touch the little button. It's like a hologram button. Well, where does it come from? Because you can hack the thing it comes from, right? I mean, yeah, if I plug into it. So is it the people's around here, the staff's comm links? That we need to plug into? You see the wires and stuff, like the hookups for all of that. Mm. Like where they can hardwire themselves into the matrix. So it's like a hardwire ha- for. Yeah. I don't know if Juliet would know. That. How old is Juliet? She's young. Let me double check. Yeah, like if she's younger than 30, she probably wouldn't know this. 19, yeah. Improv, you probably would. 
the previous version of the Matrix was all hardwired. This seems to be like a throwback to that. Yeah. Also, yeah. Also, it's just also it's just more secure for runner level stuff. Yeah. It's just a throwback to the old school Matrix, where, where things were more secure. Things were all hardwired. You had to be on site for all of it. Okay. Um, so all I gotta do is put a day tap in one of the benches plugs and you're good yep okay and she strolls on back out looks up at the bouncer as you step out a hidden compartment and like the brick wall swings out and your shotgun's standing there and he hands it off to you thank you slots the magazine back in and you're you're ak not shotgun yeah and going for the nearest uh shop that has data taps so you, you can go and get it Okay. Hey everyone, it's time for a little good news, bad news, and much like removing a band-aid, my wife won't let me whine and complain and do it slowly, so let's just rip that some bitch off and get the bad news out of the way. Circumstances have forced my hand, and my recording studio has now been disassembled with various bits of soundproofing and audio equipment residing in nondescript boxes. But this isn't quite as bad as it might seem because of the good news. My old recording studio might be no longer, but in its place, well, in its place is a nursery. My wife and I welcomed our second child into the world this past week, so things are definitely changing on my side of the microphone, but the podcast shall continue, albeit perhaps with a quieter volume and fewer episodes recorded at 2 a.m. Just because I live in Azatlan doesn't mean I'm a heartless monster, Probably. We'll see you next week, and thanks for listening.